High blood pressure, also known as hypertension, is a common disease that develops when blood flows through your arteries at higher than normal pressures. Your blood pressure is made up of two numbers, systolic and diastolic. Systolic pressure is the pressure when the ventricles pump blood out of the heart. Diastolic pressure is the pressure between heartbeats when the heart is filling with blood. Your blood pressure changes throughout the day based on your activities. For most adults, a normal blood pressure is less than 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury, which is written as your systolic pressure reading over your diastolic pressure reading 120-80 mmHg. Your blood pressure is considered high when you have consistent systolic readings of 130 mm Hg or higher or diastolic readings of 80 mm Hg or higher. You usually don't have symptoms from high blood pressure until it has caused serious health problems. About 1 in 3 US adults with high blood pressure aren't even aware they have it and are not being treated to control their blood pressure. In fact, that is why it is important to have your blood pressure checked at least once a year. To control or lower high blood pressure, your doctor may recommend that you adopt a heart-healthy lifestyle. This includes choosing heart-healthy foods such as those in the DASH eating plan. You may also need to take medicines. Controlling or lowering blood pressure can help prevent or delay serious health problems such as chronic kidney disease, heart attack, heart failure, stroke, and possibly vascular dementia. It is important to have regular blood pressure readings taken and to know your numbers, because high blood pressure usually does not cause symptoms until it has caused serious problems. Undiagnosed or uncontrolled high blood pressure can lead to serious health problems, including aneurysm, stroke, chronic kidney disease, eye damage, heart attack, heart failure, peripheral artery disease or carotid artery disease, and vascular dementia. High blood pressure in pregnancy can raise the risk of later heart and blood vessel problems for both the mother and her child. When your blood pressure stays high over time, it causes the heart to pump harder and work overtime, possibly leading to serious health problems such as heart attack, stroke, heart failure, and kidney failure. There are two main types of high blood pressure, primary and secondary high blood pressure. Primary, or essential, high blood pressure is the most common type of high blood pressure. For most people who get this kind of blood pressure, it develops over time as you get older. Secondary high blood pressure is caused by another medical condition or use of certain medicines. It usually gets better after you treat that condition or stop taking the medicines that are causing it. Your doctor may diagnose you with high blood pressure based on your medical history and if your blood pressure readings are consistently at high levels. Your doctor may do more tests to look for medical conditions that could cause high blood pressure or to see if high blood pressure has affected your kidneys. Treatments for high blood pressure include heart-healthy lifestyle changes and medicines. You will work with your provider to come up with a treatment plan. It may include only the lifestyle changes. These changes, such as heart-healthy eating and exercise, can be very effective. But sometimes the changes do not control or lower your high blood pressure. Then you may need to take medicine. There are different types of blood pressure medicines. Some people need to take more than one type. If your high blood pressure is caused by another medical condition or medicine, treating that condition or stopping the medicine may lower your blood pressure. Ask your doctor to measure your child's blood pressure starting at age 3. Helping children keep a healthy weight, eat nutritious foods, and get regular physical activity can lower their blood pressure and reduce their risk for cardiovascular disease later in life. Offer nutritious, lower calorie foods such as fruits and vegetables in place of foods high in added sugars and solid fats. Try serving more fruits and vegetables at meals and as snacks. 
Provide foods that are low in sodium, salt. Sodium raises blood pressure. Nearly 9 in 10 U.S. children eat more sodium than is recommended. Make sure water is always available as a no-calorie alternative to sugary drinks and limit juice. Help your child get the recommended amount of physical activity each day. Choose from many age-appropriate activities. And be aware of your child's growth. Learn how obesity is measured in children and use CDC's child and teen BMI calculator to screen your child for potential weight issues. So, what should I do if I have high blood pressure before, during, or after pregnancy? Before pregnancy. Make a plan for pregnancy and talk with your doctor or healthcare team about the following. Any health problems you have or had and any medicines you are taking. If you are planning to become pregnant, talk to your doctor. Your doctor or healthcare team can help you find medicines that are safe to take during pregnancy. Ways to keep a healthy weight through healthy eating and regular physical activity. During pregnancy, get early and regular prenatal care. Go to every appointment with your doctor or healthcare professional. Talk to your doctor about any medicines you take and which ones are safe. Do not stop or start taking any type of medicine, including over-the-counter medicines, without first talking with your doctor. Keep track of your blood pressure at home with a home blood pressure monitor. Contact your doctor if your blood pressure is higher than usual or if you have symptoms of preeclampsia. Talk to your doctor or insurance company about getting a home monitor. Continue to choose healthy foods and keep a healthy weight. After pregnancy, pay attention to how you feel after you give birth. If you had high blood pressure during pregnancy, you have a higher risk for stroke and other problems after delivery. And tell your doctor or call 911 right away if you have symptoms of preeclampsia after delivery. You might need emergency medical care. The best known effect of sodium on health is the relationship between sodium and blood pressure, explains Dr. Holly Nicastro, an NIH nutrition research expert. Dozens of studies in both animals and people have linked a higher salt intake with higher blood pressure. Reducing salt intake, on the other hand, lowers blood pressure. Blood pressure is the force of blood pushing against the walls of arteries as the heart pumps out blood. When this pressure rises, a condition called high blood pressure or hypertension, it can damage the body in many ways over time. High blood pressure has been linked to heart disease, stroke, kidney failure, and other health problems. There are two blood pressure numbers, and they're usually written with one above or before the other. Systolic, the first, is the pressure when the heart beats, pumping blood through the arteries. Diastolic is the pressure when the heart is at rest between beats. The numbers 120-80 mmHg are the ones you should aim to keep your blood pressure below. Some research also suggests that excessive sodium intake increases the risk of stomach cancer. Scientists continue to investigate this possible connection. Researchers do know that not everyone is equally sensitive to salt. From our experiments, we know there's lots of variation in the blood pressure response to sodium intake, Nicastro says. Certain groups of people see greater reductions in blood pressure when they lower their salt intake, African Americans, older adults, and people with blood pressure above normal. Within those groups, there's a lot of variation between people, Nicastro says. But about one in three adults nationwide has high blood pressure right now. Another third have elevated blood pressure, meaning their numbers are high enough to put them at risk to develop high blood pressure. In light of this, she says, it's really important for the majority of U.S. adults to reduce their blood pressure. Your doctor may use a risk calculator to estimate your risk of having a stroke or heart attack or dying from a heart or blood vessel disease in the next 10 years or throughout your lifetime. This information can help your doctor choose the best treatment to prevent complications. 
For example, the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease ASCVD, risk estimator external link considers your cholesterol levels, age, sex, race, and blood pressure. It also factors in whether you smoke or take medicines to manage high blood pressure or cholesterol. High blood pressure. For most people with high blood pressure, a doctor will develop a treatment plan that may include heart-healthy lifestyle changes alone or with medicines. A risk calculator can help your doctor estimate your risk of complications and choose the right treatment. A healthcare team can help you best manage your blood pressure and prevent complications. This team may include your doctor, a nutritionist, a pharmacist, and specialists for any conditions you may have, including those related to your heart. If your high blood pressure is caused by another medical condition or medicine, it may improve once the cause is treated or removed. If you are thinking about having a baby and have high blood pressure, talk with your doctor so you can take steps to lower or control your high blood pressure before and during the pregnancy. Some medicines used to treat high blood pressure are not recommended during pregnancy. If you are taking medicines to lower or control your high blood pressure, talk with your doctor about your choices for safely managing high blood pressure during pregnancy. If you have been diagnosed with high blood pressure, it is important that you continue your treatment plan. You will need regular follow-up care and may want to learn how to monitor your condition at home. Your doctor may need to change or add medicines to your treatment plan over time. Let your healthcare team know if you are planning to become pregnant. A heart-healthy lifestyle can help prevent high blood pressure from developing. To live a healthy lifestyle, choose heart-healthy foods that are lower in sodium, salt, and are rich in potassium. Fruits and vegetables are high in potassium. Avoid or limit alcohol. Get regular physical activity. Even modest amounts can make a difference. Aim for a healthy weight. Quit smoking manage stress, and get enough good quality sleep. CDC analyzed data from more than 12,000 participants ages 12 to 19 who responded to the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, NANS, from 2001 to 2016. CDC used these data to find out how the 2017 AAP Clinical Practice Guideline affects hypertension trends in youth over time. Using the new guidelines criteria, CDC found that more than 1 in 7 U.S. youth ages 12 to 19 had high blood pressure or elevated blood pressure during 2013 to 2016. In the United States, high blood pressure happens in 1 in every 12 to 17 pregnancies. It's important to monitor blood pressure before, during, and after pregnancy. This is because high blood pressure during pregnancy can harm a mother's kidneys and other organs and can cause early birth, called preterm birth, and low birth weight. For most adults, a normal blood pressure is less than 120-80 mmHg. Your blood pressure is considered high when you have consistent systolic readings of 130 mmHg or higher or diastolic readings of 80 mmHg or higher. For children younger than 13, blood pressure readings are compared with readings common for children of the same age, sex, and height. Read more about blood pressure readings for children. Talk to your doctor if your blood pressure readings are consistently higher than 120-80 mmHg. NHLBI-supported research indicates that systolic blood pressure greater than 120 mmHg can be increasingly harmful to health. Note that readings above 180-120 mmHg are dangerously high and require immediate medical attention. Your doctor will want to understand your risk factors and get general information about your health, such as your eating patterns, your physical activity level, and your family's health history to develop a treatment plan for you. Your doctor also will ask questions to see if high blood pressure has caused you any health problems. This will help your doctor determine if you need to undergo any tests. 
Anyone can have high blood pressure. Some people are more likely to have high blood pressure including African Americans, people over age 55, people with a family history of high blood pressure. Your chances of having high blood pressure are higher if you are overweight. Eat foods high in salt. Do not get regular exercise. Smoke. Drink alcohol heavily. Complications from high blood pressure for the mother and infant can include the following. For the mother, preeclampsia external icon, eclampsia external icon, stroke, the need for labor induction, giving medicine to start labor to give birth, and placental abruption, the placenta separating from the wall of the uterus. For the baby, preterm delivery, birth that happens before 37 weeks of pregnancy, and low birth weight, when a baby is born weighing less than 5 pounds, 8 ounces, 0.1, 6 the mother's high blood pressure makes it more difficult for the baby to get enough oxygen and nutrients to grow, so the mother may have to deliver the baby early. High blood pressure in youth has decreased, but youth are still at risk. Between 2001 and 2016, the prevalence of high blood pressure declined as measured by both the new and former guidelines. But there are still many young people with high blood pressure and other cardiovascular disease risk factors, such as obesity and diabetes. Even with this downward trend, under the new guideline more youth are classified as having high blood pressure than 15 years ago under the former guideline. The new guideline changes the numbers and uses a lower threshold for high blood pressure. Compared to the former guideline, the updated guideline reclassifies 2.6% of youth in the United States, or nearly 800,000 young people, as having high blood pressure. Nearly half of these newly reclassified young people have obesity. Obesity in youth means having a body mass index BMI, greater than or equal to the 95th percentile. Calculate your child's BMI. Youth ages 18 to 19 account for about half of the increase, and males account for more than two-thirds. Men are more likely than women to develop high blood pressure throughout middle age. But in older adults, women are more likely than men to develop high blood pressure. Women who have high blood pressure during pregnancy are more likely to have high blood pressure later in life. Keep up your treatment plan, including healthy lifestyle changes, to help control your blood pressure and prevent heart disease. Making lifestyle changes and remembering your medicine every day can be hard, but there are ways to help. Ask your doctor, nurse, or pharmacist about apps for monitoring and tracking your blood pressure. They also may know a way to get texts to remind you to take your medicine every day and notify you when it's time to fill your prescription. Get support from loved ones and others in your community. Have regular medical checkups and tests, as your doctor advises. Ask questions and discuss your progress. Let your doctor know if you have any new conditions or have been taking new medicines since your last appointment. Your doctor may want you to check your blood pressure at home or other locations that have blood pressure equipment. Return to screening for reminders on how to prepare for blood pressure testing and how to take your blood pressure yourself. Keep a written log of all your results. Take the log to your doctor's appointments. You may be able to send the readings to your doctor's office electronically. As part of your regular prenatal care, your doctor will measure your blood pressure at each visit. If you have high blood pressure, your doctor will closely monitor you and your baby and provide special care to lower the chance of complications. To monitor your high blood pressure, you may need to check your blood pressure at home. Keep track of how many times you feel the baby kicking each day. Limit your physical activity. Talk to your doctor about what level of physical activity is right for you. Take medicine to control your blood pressure. If you do, talk to your doctor about which medicines are safe for your baby. 
These medicines may include calcium channel blockers, nifedipine, taken by mouth, or beta blockers, labetalol, or vasodilators, hydralazine, given through in 4. Take aspirin in the second trimester, if you are at risk of preeclampsia and your doctor recommends aspirin. Visit your doctor more often to monitor your condition and your baby's growth rate and heart rate. He or she may order blood and urine tests to check how well your organs are working, which can help detect preeclampsia. If your doctor is concerned about you or your baby's health, they may recommend that you deliver your baby before 39 weeks. You may need to stay in the hospital to get medicine that will help your baby's lungs develop faster and to be monitored before and after you deliver your baby. Recent research has shown that factors such as income, your education, where you live, and the type of job you have may contribute to your risk of developing high blood pressure. For example, working early or late shifts can raise your risk. Experiencing danger or harm as a child has also been tied to a higher risk of developing high blood pressure. Everyone aged 3 or older should have their blood pressure checked by a healthcare provider at least once a year. Your doctor will use a blood pressure test to see whether you have consistently high blood pressure readings. Your doctor will talk to you about heart-healthy lifestyle changes to help prevent or manage your blood pressure. Lifestyle habits can increase the risk of high blood pressure. These habits include Eating unhealthy foods often, especially those with too much sodium and not enough potassium. Some people, including African Americans, older adults, and people who have chronic kidney disease, diabetes, or metabolic syndrome, are more sensitive to salt in their diet. Drinking too much alcohol or caffeine. Not getting enough physical activity. Smoking or using illegal drugs such as cocaine, bath salts, and methamphetamine. Not getting enough good quality sleep. Look at nutrition facts labels and try to choose prepared foods that have less than 5% of the daily value of sodium per serving. Use fresh poultry, fish, and lean meat, rather than canned, smoked, or processed. Choose fresh or frozen vegetables that have no added salt. Rinse canned foods to remove some of the sodium. Add less salt, or none, when cooking. Use reduced sodium bouillon, dressings, and sauces like soy sauce. Use fresh herbs and buy spices and blends without added salt. Cook at home instead of eating out, when possible. But when eating out, ask that no extra salt be added to your food. Some countries have tried to lower salt intake using various strategies, such as working with industry to reduce the salt content in processed foods, requiring labels on ready-to-eat foods, and educating the public. The UK achieved a 15% reduction in salt consumption between 2003 and 2011. During this time, deaths from stroke fell by 42% and from heart disease by 40%. but wouldn't we miss the taste? Several studies have shown that as you gradually reduce sodium intake, you lessen your desire for salty food, Nicastro says. And surveys of people across the UK found that most people didn't notice any difference in the taste of their food. A very modest decrease in the amount of salt, hardly detectable in the taste of food, can have dramatic health benefits for the US, Bibbins Domingo stresses. The salt we add to our food actually accounts for about 10% of our salt consumption. Most of the salt we eat comes in processed foods from stores, restaurants, and dining halls. You may already know that fast food, cold cuts, and canned foods tend to have a lot of salt. Many people don't realize that a lot of our salt is from breads and cereals, Bibbins Domingo says. Studies have found that about 15 to 20 percent of the sodium in the average American's diet comes from grain products, such as breads, cereals, crackers, and chips. In terms of advice, I think the best guidance we have is for people to pay attention to nutrition facts on the labels, Nicastro says. 
The percent daily value is a better guide than the language that's used on food labels like low salt. These labels can be confusing because they have very defined technical meanings. Try to select foods, she advises, with less than 5% of the daily value of salt per serving. Readings above 180-120 mmHg are dangerously high and require immediate medical attention. Blood pressure this high can damage your organs. Call 911 if you experience a sudden, severe headache, difficulty breathing, sudden, severe pain in your abdomen, chest, or back. High blood pressure can also lead to heart attack or stroke. Call 911 if you suspect this is happening to you or someone else. When healthy lifestyle changes alone do not control or lower high blood pressure, your doctor may prescribe blood pressure medicines. These medicines act in different ways to lower blood pressure. When prescribing medicines, your doctor will also consider their effect on other conditions you might have, such as heart disease or kidney disease. Keep up your healthy lifestyle changes while taking these medicines. The combination of the medicines and the heart-healthy lifestyle changes can help control and lower your high blood pressure and prevent heart disease. Talk to your doctor if you have any concerns about side effects from the medicines. He or she may change the dose or prescribe a new medicine. To manage high blood pressure, many people need to take two or more medicines. This is more likely in African-American adults. Possible high blood pressure medicines include angiotensin converting enzyme ACE, inhibitors to keep your blood vessels from narrowing as much, angiotensin II receptor blockers ARBs, to keep blood vessels from narrowing, calcium channel blockers to prevent calcium from entering the muscle cells of your heart and blood vessels. This allows blood vessels to relax. Diuretics to remove extra water and sodium, salt, from your body, reducing the amount of fluid in your blood. The main diuretic for high blood pressure treatment is thiazide. Diuretics are often used with other high blood pressure medicines, sometimes in one combined pill. Beta blockers to help your heart beat slower and with less force. As a result, your heart pumps less blood through your blood vessels. Beta blockers are typically used only as a backup option or if you have other conditions. Some prescription and over-the-counter medicines can make it more difficult for your body to control your blood pressure. Medicines that can raise your blood pressure include antidepressants, decongestants, medicines to relieve a stuffy nose, hormonal birth control pills, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs NSAIDs, such as aspirin or ibuprofen. Many factors raise your risk of high blood pressure. Some risk factors, such as unhealthy lifestyle habits, can be changed. Other risk factors, such as age, family history and genetics, race and ethnicity, and sex, cannot be changed. A healthy lifestyle can lower your risk for developing high blood pressure. Blood pressure tends to increase with age. Our blood vessels naturally thicken and stiffen over time. These changes increase the risk for high blood pressure. However, the risk of high blood pressure is increasing for children and teens, possibly because of rise in the number of children and teens who are living with overweight or obesity.